everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. It's been a hot minute since I put out a Wheel of Time news video, and man, oh man, is there some juicy news to share. So buckle up, we're going to have a ton to get through, and some of the most interesting and revealing stuff about the show to date. Um, obviously, there's been some other drama going on uh, about a certain virus that we will not name, so hopefully we can put that out of our head and we can address just the fun stuff about Wheel of Time news. Now, I hope all of you are staying safe uh, and you don't have cabin fever too much as of yet. I do have an idea for many of you uh, to kill some time, and that's to use Skillshare. Obviously, Skillshare is a sponsor for the channel, but in all seriousness, it's a really cool way to make use of your time and learn something new. Uh, there are courses for, like, everything. Uh, and there, it's ridiculously cheap for what it is. I don't think I could go without it. If you don't know how to do something or there's some skill you want to learn, check out Skillshare. It most likely has a course there. I literally use it all the time. The great news is that as one of my viewers, you're going to get two months of the service for free without a commitment at all. All you have to do is head to the link in the description below, sign up for the trial, and learn something while you're under lock and key right now. Just by doing so, you'll also really greatly support the channel. Let me throw up a spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, with spoilers just through the Great Hunt, but then also the New Spring. So I know that's kind of weird, so if you were one of those people that read New Spring before, then you should be fine. Uh, but otherwise, be careful because there are going to be spoilers from both books. Uh, if you haven't finished the second book of the series or New Spring, like I said, watch the video at your own risk. You have been warned. So as I haven't done a news video in quite some time, we have a lot of it to get to. So let's dive right in. Starting with some of the more minor news, we have a couple new additions to the production team. So first off, we have Melanie Carmichael as a costume designer and seamstress for the show. Melanie was previously a costume designer for Carnival Row, Your Highness, and most importantly, Game of Thrones. Her work on Game of Thrones was great as a costume designer and was a major strength for that show. It's really always a majorly important role for making an epic fantasy TV show. This is just another example of how they're going after serious talent for even the small roles in the show. I'm as excited about this hire as you can be for a costume designer. I think this is a good get. Another small piece of news is the announcement of that the production team is seeking a set of baby girls around the age of one but they're willing to accept a boy and a girl as well. What they're looking for is for a shoot for three days. This is obviously interesting because it brings up the question of why would there be a need for two babies at the age of one? My initial thoughts for the need for two kids was showing Rand at Dragon Mount, for instance, as a baby, and a lot of times they'll cast two um, child actors for that. But that brings up why the need for girl babies, not to mention the fact that the age that they're seeking is one, not a newborn. So I really don't know about this one. It could also be a part of the new spring flashback when Moraine and the other accept are giving the bounty for babies born near Dragon Mount at the end of the Battle of the Shining Walls. But again, they want a one-year-old. So I'm curious what you all think about the rationale for wanting a baby girl in that age range. Let me know in the comments below. The next piece of news is in regards to another casting, although we don't really know the role. Pasha Bakuri has been cast in an unknown role in the show. Now, I couldn't find much on him, so I really can't comment on his skills as an actor, other than to say that he looks like he could be playing a kind of imposing physical figure. Uh, apparently, he has filmed his scenes already in November, and the filming is completed. My best guess is that he's playing a white cloak. In one of the leaked videos of the production, and again, I'm not going to repost that here, uh, there is a white cloak that looks a great deal like him. Now, I can't verify that, and it's far from a conclusive shot, like you really can't see totally, but my guess is that that's him. So there we have another casting, again, has not been confirmed. We also got the announcement of another director for the series in Siren Donnelly, who was confirmed to be the director for the final episode of the series. Siren has directed both Altered Carbon and Vikings, both popular television shows. Altered Carbon is one of my new favorite shows out there. As I said before, Siren was hired to direct the final episode, but obviously with the delays, that filming may be pushed back a bit. But there's certainly a lot of credibility if he's directed Altered Carbon and Vikings. Both of those are really good shows, so this sounds like a really good hire to me. Another piece of minor news is that on February 27th of this year, the Bandersnatch Group, that's the legal entity that manages Robert Jordan's estate, filed an application for a trademark for the Wheel of Time logo for an electronic or online game. Basically, the patent application covers downloadable electronic games via the internet and wireless devices, as well as electronic online games. Now, I know some of you may hear this and assume that that means a game is in production or in pre-production, but likely this is more of a precautionary measure just to make sure that they own the patents in all forms of media for that logo. Additionally, if the show is popular, 
it's likely that a game will be produced. So this doesn't mean a whole lot yet, but it's exciting to know that the possibility is there for Nameless to be on Twitch streaming a Wheel of Time game for you all. I'll also give a quick mention to an interview I first saw on the Wheel Weaves Instagram page that involves Alvaro Morte, who plays Loghain in the show. He talks about how different Loghain is from his popular professor character in Money Heist. He doesn't say a ton here, but he does say that they're keeping much of the show the same as the books. But he also mentions that it is an adaptation and there are going to be some changes. He implies his character is being expanded upon and has a moment of great tragedy in the show. Now, none of this is groundbreaking by any means, but it does allude to a scene of some great tragedy that Loghain's going to go through. Probably his stilling, or gentling. But Rafe mentioned this months ago and said that that scene brought tears to his eyes. So this just has me anticipating this even more, so I'm pretty pumped about it. Again, nothing really big and new here but I'm just excited. So uh, a big piece of news right now is that everything else going on in the world, the production has completely shut down for a three month period on the Wheel of Time show. The cast and crew have left Prague and are back home in isolation, just like the rest of us. So obviously this is gonna have some ramifications on the show. For one, I think there was already some worry that the show wouldn't release in 2020. And I think this all but puts the nail in the coffin for a 2020 release. I think at this point, we're looking at a spring 2021 release at the earliest. They still have two episodes yet to film and not to mention the post-production work. Now, since the cast has been sent home, Amazon seems to have authorized some Q&A sessions for the cast and production team to engage with the community. The first of these that we're gonna take a look at is from Priyanka Bose. Priyanka has been cast to play Alana Mosvani in the Wheel of Time TV show. She did a much longer Q&A, but I'm gonna really mention only the super relevant Wheel of Time related questions and answers that tell us something new. The first of the questions that she answered that we're gonna take a look at is how she finds her role and if she's done shooting the season. She answered this by saying that she's never played anyone like Alana and that she's had a lot of fun. She also says that she finished her shooting prior to the shutdown of production. Now there's something major to take away from this and that's if she's done filming her parts, that means that Alana is not likely to be in episode seven or eight of the series as they haven't been filmed yet. Now this is a curious development as the speculation consensus from people is, is that the second part of season one of the show would be book two. Now this could mean a couple things. One, it could mean that Alana's role where she's present in Faldar with the Armalind seat ends in episode six, but that would also mean that Alana isn't present at all in the White Tower or the journey to the White Tower if the season is going there. And that just leaves it a bit up in the air and I'm curious what you all think of Alana not being present for episode seven and eight might mean for the plot of season one. Another question that Priyanka was asked is if she had read the books previously. She said that she hadn't and that it was a tough read for her and thanked fans for being patient with her. Now. I've seen some pushback that says that she should have read the books to be playing a role in the story. And I want you to know that it's often common for actors and actresses to not read a book for an adaptation to keep their head clear for the director's vision. Additionally, consider that this is a 15 book series if you count New Spring. That's a lot of content to cover. Sarah Nakamura, the show's book consultant, did a live stream earlier this week on her YouTube channel where she mentioned that the cast often come to her for direction on their characters, but sometimes they don't wanna to get too far ahead in the story as to not act on what's to come, but more of what's happening in the moment. So needless to say, I was not too concerned about her not reading the books and I don't think you should be either. The last question she answered that we're gonna examine here is whether she thought Elaine was beautiful and she answered quite cryptically that she doesn't know her yet. Now, this is actually quite interesting and there are a number of things that you can read into this. I think the obvious answer that many assume is that Elaine has not been cast yet and won't appear in season one. Now I've been saying this part for a while that it's possible that she wouldn't make it into season one. And here's my rationale for that. If all Elaine was gonna do was make a quick cameo in one episode and then later go on to be a main character in the series, then it would make absolutely no financial sense for a studio to lock down an actress for years, but only make one appearance in season one. They would either need to expand her role significantly in the first season to make her casting worth it, or eliminate the role and move it to season two. So does this mean that Elaine isn't gonna be in the first season? I don't think that's necessarily true. Uh, it's quite possible, but it's not for sure the way that it'll go. Alana never shares any time with Elaine in the books that I can remember. In fact, I can't think of a time where they actually even meet. It's very possible that Priyanka as Alana just doesn't share any scenes with Elaine. And so she didn't film with her and doesn't know the actress. This is entirely plausible and I wouldn't necessarily assume that this means no Elaine in season one. However, if I was gonna bet I would say that Elaine is probably not gonna make it into season one. So I want to end on what was probably the most informative news drop we've had in months about the show. 
And that came in the form of a Q&A on Instagram with Wheel of Time TV showrunner Rafe Judkins. Rafe answered a ton of questions, and I'm going to run through them with you and give my responses to his responses to help you all understand a bit of what it might mean for the show going forward. And I will tell you there are a few very big things that he drops here. So let's kick it off here. What part of the books should you be caught up on for the first season? And Rafe answered, it depends on if you like to read something before you watch it or not. So basically this is a non-answer, and of course he isn't going to give away any plot details of the show, so let's move on. What are you finding most challenging about going from book to screen? The hardest thing is the physicality of production. In the first book alone, they go to more than 20 villages and cities. To try to do that is physically impossible for the show. So most of the work that we do in the room is geographical, figuring out how to condense the story and move it through places that we can physically create. So this is interesting because he essentially identifies the biggest challenge that they have in the adaptation is condensing the various villages and locations into a more manageable number. It is crazy to think that they would build 20 different sets that are on a large scale, outdoor towns and cities uh, for just one season. So there is a clear necessity to reduce that into something that's more manageable from a production standpoint, and so that's what he's saying here. Do you have a favorite chapter from the whole saga? Mine is Veins of Gold. So many but Honey and the Tea is one off the top of my head. So I thought this one was funny, uh, and not that it's a bad chapter, Honey and the Tea, uh, but this is an odd one, I think. Uh, I'm not going to talk about what's in the chapter, Honey and the Tea, for the sake of keeping the video spoiler safe, but it's a chapter in Knife of Dreams that nothing crazy eventful happens within. It's just kind of an interesting choice, so if you read the books, feel free to look it up. Um, I just thought that was interesting. Who is your favorite actor from New Zealand that you've cast? Lucy Lawless. But that was another show. So this one got my hopes up for about five seconds until I realized that he didn't say that they had cast Lucy Lawless, unfortunately, because I love her. That would have been awesome. We can't wait to see Elaine, Avienda, and Min. And then he said, me either. These are three of my favorites. Now, this is one of the first couple of times that Rafe actually addresses the three women. Many have been speculating that they would be cut or combined. Rafe essentially states that all three women are going to be in the show. Should Amazon do a better job of engaging fans' love of theory and speculation? Please embrace us. I love theory and speculation. What can they do? Do better to engage you send suggestions and i'll forward them along not that it's a bad question and not that i wouldn't love to see more information come out about the show from amazon but i do think we're a bit spoiled uh, this is the most engaged i've ever seen a production team with the fan base for a television show that hasn't even come out yet i think it's very very rare that a cast and crew are this connected with fans on a show that hasn't aired while i'd love to see more i don't want to get crazy with expectations but hey Come on, give us some more, guys. Has any post-production work begun, or does that not start until filming is completed? Nope, we do it simultaneously before blank hit. I was prepping two episodes, shooting two episodes, and in post on four episodes and writing season two simultaneously. Okay, so lots of goodies to unpack here. First of all, this confirms that they finished filming six episodes, working on post-production on four of them, and getting ready to shoot two more. So that implies a couple things. For one, it sounds like episodes one and two may be completed in an initial draft form. It also confirms that episodes seven and eight have not been filmed yet. One thing that I'm super pumped about is that they're doing post-production simultaneously. While it's almost certainly not totally complete, that means that they aren't being idle during the break in filming, and they should have a good amount of post-production work done on the episodes that have been filmed, as well as much of the pre-production work on the final episodes. Will there be a soundtrack? Who's the composer? Of course, David Buckley, plus a few incredible musical guests we've already had. So obviously I've talked before about how good of a hire I think David Buckley was. Rafe saying that they brought in more musical guests is something that has me super excited. I think music plays a large part in success for these shows, and I'm super excited to hear this. Are Men and Elaine in Season 1? T-W-W-A-T-W-W. So in case you don't know what that means, it's the wheel weaves as the wheel wills. And so in other words, Rafe did answer the question. So speculation continues. Are you going to merge Min and Elaine? Hell no. I almost got the feeling from this response that Rafe is kind of annoyed at the idea that he would merge them. You see this come up again, but I get the feeling he thinks fans aren't giving him credit for keeping the show as authentic as possible. Like, he's a real fan. Uh, like, a legit real fan. Uh, he's not a random guy that they found to do this, guys, so just keep that in mind. He's not trying to go out and cut stuff, even though he has to. What was the first moment you were speechless on set? First time walking into Emmons Field with my mom. Again, this comes back to Rafe being a fan. Can you imagine reading the books over and over and dreaming of this as your favorite series to finally walk onto the set 
of Emmons Field, the place where the story begins. Uh, it just gets me excited talking about it. Is Matt fluent in the old tongue yet? We've had a couple of cast members speak in it already, and they nailed it. So I'm really happy they're incorporating the old tongue into the show and working on pronunciations. Uh, I'm actually really excited to hear them say things with it. If you think back, uh, they actually, when they added the Dothraki language to Game of Thrones, I think that added to the world building. And so to have the old tongue be a part of the show has me pretty excited. Which character has your favorite costume so far? Ooh, this is tough. Uh, probably Jeffrem Bornhold. Okay, so a lot here again. For one, this confirms the White Cloaks and Bornhold are in the story, for those of you who thought they might be cut. Secondly, the White Cloak uniforms we saw in some of the leaked footage are badass. Uh, but again, I'm not going to link those videos here. Uh, you can find them on the internet if you want. But uh, I'm pretty impressed. And so it sounds like Rafe is as well. How is the cast and crew weathering the pandemic? Our team in Prague did an amazing job of getting everyone out and keeping them safe. And now everyone's home and we all live on Instagram. So it's good to know the cast and crew are safe and that no one we know of has the virus. It seems like this is a concerted effort to engage with fans while they're on break with these Instagram Q&A sessions, as we've seen a couple of the actors and actresses do it. I would assume we're going to see more of them. Who is your favorite Forsaken? Ah, I love the ladies. Grendel, Lanfear, Mogideon, and Deshamayel spends a special place in my heart the more time I spend with him. Okay, I can't help but think this was a very wink-wink comment from a brave. Uh, he said before that the three female Forsaken were his favorite. He never mentioned Deshamayel then. So the fact that he makes a point to mention him here is very telling. And then to say that he loves them the more time that he spends with him. Uh, here's what that tells me. One, that we have an actor cast as Deshamayel. Two, I'm going to venture to guess to say that he's somebody moderately famous. This is just me speaking. I have zero evidence of that, but it's just a hunch that they're withholding an announcement on purpose. There's a reason we haven't heard who he is yet, uh, and I'm pretty damn excited to find out. What's been your favorite shooting location so far? Slovenia. Spectacular stuff there. But pretty much every location I've seen them film in so far is beautiful, and I definitely want to visit that area now. It's on my list. Yes or no? Have you had to make any cuts, be it a scene or a character, that has been painful for you? Yes. Now, I think this goes without saying anyone who loves the books won't want to cut anything. Um, but as we've talked about, it's something that's a part of the process of an adaptation. How are you planning to handle the visualization of the weaves? Any little tidbits? We are trying to stay as true to the books as possible. I've been giving a bunch of VFX folks uh, long diatribes about channeling weaves, threads, air versus earth versus air, etc. And the early stuff that has started coming in. It looks effing awesome. I screamed when Rosamund started channeling. Okay, I'm gonna admit I got goosebumps when I read this one live. I cannot tell you how excited I am to see Rafe excited about it. Like the fact that he's that pumped about seeing channeling in action has me pumped to see it now. And you know that special care is being put into it and it sounds like it's gonna be freaking sweet. Similar to them performing in an old inn, what other iconic moment filmed stands out to you? Rand and Tam walking through the Westwood. So this doesn't say much, but it also says a lot. Of course, it's iconic seeing Rand and Tam in the Westwood, but you also wouldn't get this scene without a murder all, so I can't wait for that. Blink twice if Min is in season one. Wink, wink. So, is Rafe playing with us here? Um, they said blink, and then he winked? Hmm. Uh, but in all seriousness, I'm fairly certain that we are going to see Min. There's probably an actress already cast for Min, we just don't know who it is yet. This also implies that there are other characters in the show, or actors or actresses, that just haven't been announced yet. Will Jeff Probst be one of the Aiel? Can you make some calls? If he dyes his hair red. For those of you that don't know, Rafe was once a contestant on the American reality show Survivor. Jeff Probst is the host of Survivor, so this was obviously a joke question. But the only thing that comes from this non-joke related is that Rafe intends to keep the IEL with red hair. So for all of you who are worried about that, there you go. Which Wheel of Time book best describes your self-isolation experience? A memory of light. I'm not sure what to make of this answer. Does that mean that he's fighting the last battle right now? Can we expect a trailer for the show anytime soon? Probably not for a long while, sadly. Now this one's a bummer, obviously, and obviously I'm an idiot as well for thinking that we might get one for the Super Bowl. But maybe we'll get a Super Bowl trailer for next year now. Can you guys do a big Wheel of Time Wednesday announcement during the hiatus to keep us fans hyped instead of Al? I don't know what that means. Yeah, it would cheer us up and we'd have some fun news. So this one's exciting if he thinks that they've got a lot of fun news to share with us. Obviously, they do have a lot of things still to share. Uh, so we should expect some big things coming here soon if we take this statement seriously. Is Lan going to be as much of an absolute stud in the show as he is in the books? You've seen Daniel Henney, right? I actually think that Daniel Henney is going to do a great job with Lan. I think a lot of people are going to be really surprised, and he will totally replace your headcanon as Lan if you don't see it yet. Just wait until you see him in a costume, guys. 
The man is a specimen already, and he's a super talented actor. If you were an Aes Sedai, what Aja would you choose? So such a good question. They all have merits, but green for the win. If only to hang out with Priyanka Bose. I think this is pretty much just a fun answer in his way of highlighting Priyanka, who everyone seems to love on the set. Any funny behind the scenes stories? I once walked up to Rosamund's dummy to say hello and then pretended to check its makeup and told everyone they were doing great work. So I'm not even sure I understand this one. Someone explain it to me. Will we have to wait until season two to see any Aiel other than Rand? Nope. The only one that you will see will shock you. Ha. Amazon shouldn't let me be on here when I'm cooped up for a week. So this is interesting. For one, I'm excited to see the Aiel and who this could be. My guess is going to be that it's Rand's mother on the slopes of Dragonmount, but that's my guess. RJ writes a lot of internal headspace stuff. What's one hint on how the show will handle that? That's the biggest difficulty of any novel adaptation, figuring out how to make the internal monologue come out clearly to the audience. A lot of changes we make and stories that we tell differently are designed to serve exactly that purpose. Showing you what those characters' internal monologues from the book are without them just saying it out loud in exposition. So I've always thought this was going to be the challenge. Robert Jordan does so much internal monologue as his storytelling technique. The trick is going to be showing that without exposition, like Rafe was saying. I'm glad to see it's something they recognize and they're not taking the easy way out and just having characters' exposition dump all over us. It's just not fun to watch shows like that. Are you using taller actors to portray the Aiel or camera trickery? Trying to get tall folks, but I'm less concerned with height and more concerned with acting ability. I can't tell you how happy I am with that answer. Uh, this addresses a lot about their overall strategy with casting, and it helps you guys understand more about why the people they've already chosen are chosen for their roles, despite maybe not looking exactly like what people thought the characters looked like in the books. Acting ability trumps everything. And trust me when I say this, you would much, much rather have someone that's a bit shorter play in Aiel if they're a great actor or actress than just finding someone who maybe looks like a stereotypical Aiel. A good example of this is Hugh Jackman being cast as Wolverine. Wolverine from the comics is extremely short and his character is known for that. And if you're just a movie watcher, you don't even care about that or even notice it because he was just so damn good in the role. Since Jordan Khan was canceled, can we maybe get an extra treat next month? Sure. What do you want? Well, here's to hoping we get more information soon, Rafe. I'm excited. Do you have a favorite wise one? Avi. I'm going to leave this one alone for the sake of spoilers in the video, but interesting take. How many Trollocs do I have to take out to become a writing assistant? Violence is never the answer. Does this mean that Rafe is advocating for the way of the leaf? What would you say the CGI to practical ratio is going to be? Trying to do as much in camera as we possibly can. So this is what I like to hear. I love the realism of practical effects, and it's good to hear that they agree. How are you handling sword forms and their names? Well, we have a sword master on the show who walks into every room and tests out everything as a weapon. He could most definitely kill me with any item in my office. So this, again, is music to my ears. I keep saying this, but these guys are taking this seriously. This is a passion project for Rafe. If that isn't obvious, you aren't paying attention. While he doesn't actually answer the question here, it's nice to know that they have someone on set who can teach the sword and that it won't be just boring sword fighting. How are the horses on set? Is Mandarb spectacular? They are so great. Honestly, I love our horses. Mandarb and Aldeeb are downright sexy. Bella isn't sexy? When will we get more casting announcements to hold us over? I'll try to get them to put out something soon. A lot of folks in all departments are affected by the state of the world right now, so I can't promise a timeline. Again, this just basically says what we've already assumed. There are quite a few casting announcements that have not yet been made public, most likely for some major characters. Will we see the prologue from Eye of the World on screen in season one? You will hear that phrase. So this is a really, really weird answer. Uh, I really have no idea what Rafe means by that. I'm wondering if he means that the be at the beginning of each book with the phrase, the wheel of time turns as ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend, etc. I can't think of a phrase from the prologue that would make any sense here, so I can only think maybe that he misunderstood the question. This might be a good follow-up question if he does another Q&A. What has been your favorite set so far? Faldara. So we sort of already knew that they had been to Faldara, but this confirms that we will be there by at least book six because that's what they filmed so far. So I'm kind of excited about that. Please tell me you've cut Narg. Never. Thank the light. To what extent has Harriet McDougall been involved with the project? She's a consulting producer, so she's been out to Prague to the sets. 
She reads all the scripts and sends me her notes on them. She and Maria are hugely helpful for maintaining the truth of the series and always keeping me honest when it comes to things that change too much. Pretty happy to hear that both Harriet and Maria, who was Robert Jordan's assistant, are both very involved with the scripts. This stuff should be a breath of fresh air for our hardcore fans. Is any aspect of the show still in development or has it all been stalled because of the virus? A lot can be done virtually. Uh, I'm still doing VFX, editing in season two virtual writer's room, and I can do it all in pajamas. This is exciting simply because it means they will continue to work while I'm break, and hopefully it won't slow down the production as much as I thought it might. Did you read The Way of Kings or Mistborn? Please make a TV adaptation for them too. Read both, love both. Not a wheel of time question, but most Robert Jordan fans are also Brandon Sanderson fans at this point, and for good reason, Sanderson's a beast. Will Min, Elaine, and Avienda have to be combined into a single character? Girl, you crazy. I'm not going to combine huge characters like that. Maybe sometimes a minor character folded into a more major one to make better use of our cast, but nothing nutso. This answer made me laugh, and I kind of addressed this earlier. Let's give him more credit than to combine major characters. Uh, one thing to note here, we're going to get some uh, smaller characters rolled into larger ones at some point. I'm interested to see who you all think that might be. Definitely let me know in the comments. RJ created thousands of characters. Given that, do you feel the need to create new characters? Anyone new is inspired by characters in the books or a number of characters combined. If we paid to cast all speaking roles in the book, we could only afford to have radio play. He makes a good point here. It's not likely that they're adding new characters unless it's going to be a number of different characters combined. I've seen some speculating that this is Kareen Nagashi, but I still think that would be an odd choice to bring an Aes Sedai who died in New Spring into the earlier books for an expanded role in the main sequence. It just seems kind of odd to me. So far, what's your favorite prop on the show? Great Serpent Ring. We all want one. I want one too. Will Loyal portray the Ogier species or will he be humanized for screen? He's an Ogier. Again, no cutting corners here. We're getting real Ogier. That's awesome. How involved, if involved at all, is Sanderson in the writer's room? Brandon is hugely helpful. I talked to him before we started season two while he was in Prague to get advice and he reads all the scripts and gives notes. He's incredibly thoughtful and understands the process of adaptation and what's required from it. I feel so lucky to have him involved. I would have him do more if I could make him. I'll say the same thing I did with Harriet and Maria. This is big and this is really important. It's it's super important to have Sanderson on board. And from what I've heard, Brandon thinks that we're going to like what we get. What words of hope would you offer for a fan afraid that the show will cut out a lot of content? I genuinely think that we are cutting less than most people think. When I see people ask questions like, are you cutting men? It blows my mind. I don't know how you do an adaptation without some of these characters. I think it'll be some of the smaller stories you'll miss. We can't have Rand and Matt travel to many, many inns on their way on their travels across the countryside, for instance. It's not producible. So I think that'll be more of what you miss, I think. The books will always exist to read for that. So this is what I've been saying, and I think Rafe's minor frustration is bubbling up here. They likely aren't completely rewriting the story as much as they're cutting small things that just aren't relevant. I doubt that we're going to see the Grimwell's farm or... Peter, 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 or Peter, the dark friend. I'd guess that we're just going to see four kings as a town that they stop in. Stuff like that. So they're just going to cut out smaller little tidbits. I think Bella is such an important character. Will the same horse play Bella throughout the series? We've already had to have two Bellas. It turns out a horse for riding on film is not the same as a horse for pulling a cart. And she must do both. So I've been saying this since my Bella casting videos. Two actors are going to need to be cast. Sarah also helped confirm this the other day. Daniel Day-Lewis and Meryl Streep have been cast as Bella, confirmed by Rafe. For more on that, watch my Bella casting video. Can you please make sure you do a good job? Books are so great. This is a really good idea. Duh. Now that you've met them, settle the score. Who's better with women, Rand, Matt, or Perrin? I think they'd all say it's the other. Well, this is straight from the books here. Who do you think is better with women? Will the show be understandable for those who didn't read the books? Well, that's the idea. If there are little things that don't get through, luckily Google exists. This is a reminder to me that we all need to remember that yes, they are making the show for us as fans, but they are also making it for new fans that will be coming in with the release of the show. When Rafe says Google exists, that's exactly why we're building thegreatblight.com. Thanks to everybody who supported the creation on the GoFundMe. We're hard at work right now getting that ready. Who is your favorite Aes Sedai in the books? And you can't say Maureen or Swan or the Wonder Girls. So many rules. I honestly love them all, except Galena. Alana, Leandrin, Varen are probably my top three. And Swan. Uh, there's too many I love. 
Shirium, Pavara. Curious who all your favorite non-Supergirl Aes Sedai is. To me, it's very clearly Varen. So how has it been to work with your incredibly talented cast? Also, dinner's ready. So that was fairly obviously Rafe's boyfriend, Taylor Napier, telling Rafe that dinner was ready. We know this because at the end of the Q&A, Rafe shouts him out and thanks him for making dinner. So here are my final thoughts. For one, I'm even more excited than I was previously. I genuinely feel like Rafe is the right person for this. He's more than someone who wants to make a career out of a popular fantasy series. He's literally a super fan, and that shows through in his words and actions. I honestly can't wait. I'm curious what you all think. Uh, let me know in the comments below, what are you excited for? Real quick, I also wanted to give a quick shout out to another new Wheel of Time content creator that I think has a new pretty badass video out there. Now this is not an exclusively Wheel of Time channel, but I really dig his style and I think he's gonna be making more Wheel of Time content as far as I can see. His channel's name is Thread and he does reviews of various different things. I've got his five reasons to watch the Wheel of Time video linked in the description below. Please watch the video, give him a subscribe, give him a like. The guy made a super high quality video. Please give this video a like as well while you're at it and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release new Wheel of Time content. If you want to support the channel and thegreatblight.com, check out the Patreon to find out how you can get involved. The link is in the description as well. Thanks to everybody for watching and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?